It hasn't been like the most exciting week of sales, but I have had a lot of little sales trickle in and those little sales add up. And so it ended up being a somewhat decent week. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. Hey everyone, my name is Becky Park and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, Kitizen, and Thread Up. I also have a full-time job as a high school choir teacher and I'm currently teaching remotely from home. My daughter is also at home learning remotely and my husband is also teaching remotely from home. So we have a lot going on right now, but in the midst of that, I still have been able to find pockets of time here and there to do some part-time reselling. And so in this video, what I'm going to be sharing with you is what I was able to sell in the week of September 14th, which happened to be my birthday, through the 20th. By the way, I did ask over on my Instagram how old you guys thought I was. I'm going to give you a moment to guess right now. So guess, guess. I am 35. I just turned 35. So let me know in the comments below. Is that kind of what you thought? On my Instagram, most people were actually like pretty close to 35. And then I had some stinkers who were like 40, 42. <laughs> Y'all are dead to me. So I did have my birthday and maybe I had a little bit more going on because of that. Like I know on the day of my birthday, we had a lot of stuff happening and um, you know, we just did little like dinners and celebrations and stuff in different ways. So I, I guess some of my time was tied up, but then to be honest, I just wasn't super dedicated to my reselling business last week, but that's okay. That's the cool thing about doing this part-time. You can put in a ton of time into it when you want to, kind of like I've been doing this week, or you can kind of take a step back and say, you know what, I have other things I want to focus my time on. So it was wasn't like a super heavy reselling week, but I did manage to make some sales. So if you enjoy these kinds of what sold videos, I do one every single week. I also have tips videos as well as like thrift hauls and thread up unboxings and all kinds of stuff. So definitely make sure that you are subscribed if you enjoy reselling content. And if you're excited to see what sold for me, go ahead and hit that like button and let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna start with my birthday, which is September 14th, and that was a Monday. Um, it was like a decent day of sales, I guess. Nothing like, again, amazing, and I had a return on my birthday, like what in the world? So the first thing to sell over on Poshmark was this Banana Republic striped button-up Oxford shirt in a size extra large that sold for $10, so I made $7.05 on it. I relisted that because if you didn't know, I have been on this kick. I'm trying to relist my entire Poshmark closet, and I'm finding Finally, like into the listings that I listed back in like May. So we're getting close. Like we're almost done. And then I can start listing all the brand new inventory that I have in my house because I have a lot, like I have a lot of stuff. So I'm hoping that that'll be the push that I need going into the fourth quarter to just like list like crazy because I'll be so excited to be done relisting. But that was a result of me relisting. And after, you know, it being relisted for probably a week or so, it did finally sell for $10, which is not a lot, but I was just happy to get rid of it. I made $7.05. That I got for under a dollar at probably my very first Plato's Closet 90% off clearance sale. I've had this sucker for a long long time. So thank goodness it is out of my house now. And then over on eBay, I sold this pair of Under Armour black cropped jogger sweatpants for men in a size extra large. They were pretty faded. I got them at the Indianapolis bins again quite some time ago. I thought that this was a relist, but I hadn't even gotten around to relisting them yet before they finally sold. So I did send out offers to watchers, I believe for $12.50. They pay for shipping, although I did have to pay like 27 cents more than what they paid. And so I ended up making $9 and 86 cents on those. Again, like I've had them for a while, so I was okay with moving them at that price. And because they were faded, I didn't think that they would command much more than that. The next thing to sell on eBay, this was the sad sale because I did end up, you know, getting these returned to me or they're on their way back to me right now. But it was this pair of New Balance 928 black walking shoes in a size 10. I put diabetes in the listing title because when I was doing my research on these shoes, I feel like that's what I kept coming across was the fact that a lot of people with diabetes wore these shoes. Um, I don't really know what that means, but it has some correlation with diabetes. Someone sent me an offer on them for $30. I shipped them out to her after they pay for shipping. They sold via promoted listing, so I would have made $24.80. However, once they got them, they said that they were just too tight. Like, you know, they were very appreciative of the fact that I shipped them out in a timely manner. And, you know, they said that they were exactly as described, but they were just much tighter than they anticipated. And I don't know about you, but like, I 
obviously want to make money, but I also don't want people to be stuck with stuff that they don't want or stuff that they can't use. Like that's an infuriating feeling buying something and knowing that you can't return it for whatever reason. So I do accept returns within 30 days or whatever it is. I know that there are some people out there who operate under the idea that you should not accept returns and that's totally fine. It's their business model. For me personally though, I just don't want people like going out of their way to find a reason to be able to return things. Like I feel like you hear a lot of stories about people opening item not as described cases and things of that nature because they just are trying to find a way to return your item. And so again, for me, like I totally believe this person when they say that these shoes just ended up being too narrow for them. And what are they going to do with shoes that they can't wear? So for me, I was happy to take the return. I'm sure that they'll sell again. Maybe they'll sell for even more because, you know, $30 was not my asking price. So you know, it is what it is. That's the cost of business. And those are on their way back to me right now. So I'll just relist them. And at the end of the video, when I tell you how much I made in the week, I do not include that amount because obviously that's not actually in my bank account. And then the last thing to sell on Monday, the 14th was on Kitizen. This was a very surprising sale. It was from the University of Illinois, which is the college campus town that I live on. And there we have this really cool area that my kids and I actually really like to go to and walk around in. There's like an arboretum, there's like this cute little garden, but then there's also this Japan house. And every once in a while they have these big like ceremonies or they have big events at the Japan house. And there's this one called Matsuri. And so this was like a volunteer t-shirt for someone who was volunteering at the Matsuri ceremony or event or whatever. And I got it for free from a friend of mine who had helped out, I believe. Um, I just listed it because I was like, who knows? Like maybe someone will just like the cat graphic on the front. Maybe someone has some sort of ties with the U of I. I was fully expecting this to sell over on eBay because on eBay you can sell like ridiculous things because there are so many people on eBay, but it sold on Kitizen. So someone on Kitizen and put it in their cart. I sent them an offer on this item for $12 with free shipping. They accepted. So after I paid for shipping and after kid is in fees, I made $6.67, which is not a lot. But again, I got it for free. And that was something that I did relist because it was one of my oldest listings. So that's like the cherry on top that I was able to get rid of something that I've had forever. It was really cute. It's just like such a specific particular item. I knew that it needed a special buyer. And they found me on Kitizen, so there you go. On Tuesday, September 15th, I had one Poshmark sale and it was this John Deere long sleeve camo layered t-shirt or like a, it was like a t-shirt with like a, like a thermal, whatever, long sleeve underneath it. It just had that layered look in a size 2T teething toddler. Someone sent me an offer on this for $12, which I accepted, so I made $9.05. Although come to think of it, maybe that was a closet, I don't remember. I don't know if that was closet clear out. I don't know if that was closet clear out or not. I think it was. I think that was actually closet clear out. So yeah, that one I've had since probably like March or April. It did come from the consignment store that I've been talking about a lot on my channel. Um, it's the place where I shop by like the big garbage bag and I pay $50 per garbage bag. So that I had less than 90 cents into. And like I said, I made $9 and five cents. Plus, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I live in like Farmville and there's like corn everywhere and farms and all that kind of stuff. I just think like little John Deere stuff is really cute. So when I find it for cheap, like 80 cents or something, I'll pick it up and it usually does sell, just obviously not for a lot. And then over on eBay, I had um, a couple not very exciting sales. Like I said, nothing is super exciting. I had like one exciting sale and that was really it. But over on eBay, I sold this Old Navy black raglan sleeve hoodie in a size extra small. That was a relist of an item. I had had it forever. Someone gave it to me for free. So, you know, I had it listed for a very long time, but I, you know, very recently relisted it and I put it out to auction on eBay. That's honestly what I'm doing with a lot of these relisted items. I'm putting them out to auction on eBay because I'm just so sick of looking at them. I just want to at least make my money back or make something on them. And I want to like at least pay myself back a little bit for the amount of time that I put into like photographing them and all that kind of stuff. It takes a lot for me to pull something and like donate it to Goodwill. Like I've already taken the pictures. I've already steamed the item. I've already invested enough minutes into it that I just want to see it through and like send it off to a new home. So I put this out to auction for $2.99. It got the one bid. They paid for shipping, although they paid a little more than they had to. So I ended up making $2. 
believe it or not, there's a sale coming up that was even less than that. So get ready. And then the next thing on eBay to sell was this pair of Bullhead Denim Co., which is, I believe, a Pacific Sunwear brand. Tan, slim fit, skinny jeans in a size 32 by 32. I got an offer on these for $14. I was happy to let them go. And although they paid for shipping, I didn't charge enough for shipping. I did have to put them in a padded flat rate envelope because they were more than a pound. And they sold via promoted listings. I list all of my eBay listings right now at 1%. And so I ended up making $9 dollars and 68 cents off of those i do think that those came from the consignment store if not there then from like a plato's closet or something and then on thread up i did have a sale this one was okay it was a pair of chico's embroidered skinny jeans in a size extra large which is like a chico size three um i've talked about selling plus size or like bigger sizes on thread up before it does move really quickly for me and usually like pretty close to the max price that I can price items at on ThreadUp. So, you know, I really do enjoy sending like larger sizes or plus sizes to ThreadUp. So they sold on ThreadUp for $49.99. My payout was $15. I, that's honestly about what I would make if I were to sell those jeans on Poshmark or if I were to sell them on eBay or something like that, but I didn't have to do any of the work. I just had to throw them in a box, send them on their merry way, and poof, right? So I have been sending them a ton of Chico's. They do accept, I would say, the majority of it. There have been a few pieces here and there that they haven't accepted. I've also sent them like Zenergy by Chico's. I've sent them Chico's Travelers, and like I said, they do take the majority of it. A good amount of it sells. So some of it doesn't and I reclaim those pieces but again like I think I just have more success selling Chico's and brands similar to Chico's over on ThreadUp than I do in my own Poshmark closet or eBay store so I don't know how Chico's does for you if you're a ThreadUp seller or even if you sell on like Poshmark or eBay let me know are you a fan of reselling Chico's I know there's a market out there for it I, just, I have not had that much success with it in my own Poshmark closet or eBay store and then on Wednesday, which was September 16th, I had one Poshmark sale and it was this pair of Sperry Topsider Tan Boat Shoe Slide on Loafers in a size 8M, M being medium width. They sold for $20, that was the offer sent to me, so I made $16 on those. And I did get those from the consignment store for less than $2, so that was a pretty good flip. Sperry's are not like my favorite thing to sell. I did pick up a ton of them at the consignment store because again, they were so cheap, but they don't sell quickly, they don't sell for very much, but they will sell eventually. And then on eBay, I sold this Oshkosh Bagosh green plaid long sleeve button up shirt in a size 10. This sold for $10. It took them like a few days to pay, but they did finally get around to paying. I did have them pay for shipping, but again, I had to pay like 32 cents additional. And then I made $7.86 off of that. That came from the consignment store, so I had less than a dollar into it. And then I had probably my second lowest sale of the week. So believe it or not, this is not my lowest sale. There's one even lower than this, but this was a Charlotte Russe floral deep V-neck dress. This was a relist. I got it for free from someone at my church. I put it out to auction for $1.99 because good Lord, I was so sick of looking at this thing. Charlotte Russe, I mean, I would like 99.9% .9 of the time never pick it up anywhere, even if it was super cheap, just because even the retail value of Charlotte Russe is so cheap. And I don't like, for some reason, I feel like Old Navy, for example, like there's, there are some people who will like actively look for Old Navy pieces. I don't feel like there is that much of that going on with Charlotte Russe. So I put it out to auction for $1.99. I had them pay for shipping. I had them pay a little bit more for shipping than they needed to. So I ended up making $1.69 off of that. Again, I got it for free, but I had taken the time to take pictures and stuff. So at that point, I was just like, I'm going to see this through. I'm not going to pull it and donate it. And then over on Mercari, so here I go. You know, I'm talking about how I have a hard time selling Chico's myself. But here was a Chico sale. It was uh, Chico's Travelers, which is like their line where the items just like, it's very hard to wrinkle them, right? So you can just throw them in your suitcase if you're traveling. And when you pull them out, like they're still in really great condition. So they're very low maintenance and they, it does have a following, this Chico's Travelers line. So this was this black and white striped tank top in a size small. Um, I got a $15 offer on it on Mercari, which I accepted that was with free shipping. So I made $9.98 after I paid for shipping. And that did come from the consignment store as well. And then over on Thread Up, 
I sold this Zenergy by Chico's. So a lot of Chico sold this week, like most of it on ThreadUp, but you know, it did sell. This Zenergy by Chico's owl sweater in a size medium. It sold for $39.99. I made $8 on it. That one, to be honest, I probably could have made more on if I sold it myself, but that would require me to take pictures of it, store it, share it, all that kind of stuff. I'd rather send it in, make a quick $8 and be on my way. And then on September 17th, which was a Thursday, I had a few Poshmark sales. The first one was this pair of Nike Golf Modern Fit Dry Fit Khaki Pants in a size 34. I don't remember where I got these. I remember being like kind of excited. Like I was like, oh, these are really nice. They look really like modern and we were approaching golf season. So I was like, these are perfect. But there was basically a rip like on the butt. Like it was like the beginnings of a rip. It was like perforated. Like it would just take like one little bend over to pick up a golf ball or something. And then bam, like boxers exposed, right? So I was obviously super irritated to find that. And I do believe I sold these before and then I noticed the rip. Like I didn't even notice the rip when I was photographing, but I noticed the rip when I went to package them. So obviously I reached out to the buyer and I was like, look, like there is a pretty significant rip on the butt. And I want to make sure that you know that. And if you want to cancel, please do like, that's totally fine. And he of course canceled. So I relisted them. I dropped the price considerably and I noted the beginnings of that rip. I got an offer on them for $10. I accepted because that at least helped me at least like double my initial investment. So I made $7 and five cents. I probably didn't even double my investment. I probably just barely made my money back, but at least I didn't lose money on that. And again, like I noted, you know, the flaw, I took a picture of the flaw. I made sure that it was very very obvious and that just goes to show like even if stuff is flawed you can still sell it like there's still a buyer out there for it you just obviously aren't going to get as much for it and it's not like I go out of my way to sell things that are damaged and flawed but because a lot of this stuff is relisted some of it is relisted for that reason you know like it's been sitting around for quite some time because of a flaw or something like that but it can sell the next thing to sell on Poshmark was this old navy gray button-up chunky grandpa sweater in a size small this sold for $18, which was my full asking price. I was pretty shocked, but I have had this for over a year, so I was happy to see it move. So I made $14.40 on that. The next thing to sell was this vintage Ann Taylor ribbed mock neck sleeveless sweater in a size large. This I got an offer on for $19, so I made $15.20. I was just about getting ready to relist this as well because I've had this in my closet for over a year. This was like pretty close to being relisted because it is one of my older listings. I think I kept kept it like you know I got it for free from a friend and then I kept it because I was like I like the look of it I think I'll wear it but I had it all last winter and I didn't reach for it once so I was like you know what it can go and it's a really cool sweater it was like really oversized and chunky I could see it being really cute with like a belt wrapped around the waist it's like perfect for the fall so I totally get why it's sold now so I like I said sold it for 19 and made $15.20 off of something that someone gave me for free and then this was my best sale of the week and it happened to be on thread up so on thread up I sold this free people pink mock neck sweater in a size extra small it was like a sweater tunic because it was pretty long it sold on thread up for a hundred sixteen dollars and ninety nine cents this is a used free people sweater I believe it's a little bit older of a style and it sold for a hundred sixteen dollars and ninety nine cents and that left me with a payout of fifty nine dollars and thirty four cents I mean, yeah, I have sold free people before. I have sold some free people even for pretty good money, but that was pretty stinking good. But I can almost guarantee I would not have made that much on this sweater if I tried to sell it myself. So, you know, Free People, I think, is a pretty great brand to send into ThreadUp. I do have a couple other things from Free People that I have sent in that haven't sold yet, but I'll wait and hopefully it'll sell within, you know, the 60 days that it's up there. But yeah, I don't know. There are some brands like Free People that you just can do a lot better on on ThreadUp than you can on Poshmark and those kinds of apps. And I think the reason for it is because I feel like ThreadUp isn't as saturated with brands like Free People because a lot of people who are resellers are just trying to sell those things themselves in their own Poshmark closets and stuff. So that's why I feel like maybe there just isn't as much free people on ThreadUp. And when it shows up, people just kind of snatch it up. So that's my personal theory. I don't know. But I have about five or six active boxes on ThreadUp right now. And I have been seeing like three to four consistent sales a week, which is, you know, really good 
passive income, if you will, a lot more passive than, you know, selling on eBay or Poshmark or something like that. So if you want to learn a little bit more about how to include ThreadUp into your reselling business, I do encourage you to try out Chriselle's course. It is $147, but it's a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to sell on ThreadUp and get the most out of it. It has all the information that you need in one place. And something that she likes to say is that time is money. Could you learn all of the stuff that she shares in her course on your own? You absolutely could, but it would just take a lot of time for you to look at a lot of different YouTube videos, really like read up on different blogs. You would just have to spend a lot more time than if you were to just invest in her course. So she has extended the $147 price through the month of October. She was initially only going to have the course be $147 until the end of September and then start charging $247 in October. So she is extending it through October. And if you want to take advantage of this low price before the price goes up, then I you know, highly encourage you to check out my link down in the description below. And then when the price does go up in October, it's going up because she's coming out with a newer version with like updates to her course. And if you get the course even right now at the $147 price, you will have access to the newer version of the course. So I definitely think it's worth, you know, trying to get it now. If you have any interest in trying out ThreadUp at all, I was pretty hesitant for a while too, but personally, I am really glad that I've added it to my regimen, if you will of reselling. So moving on to Friday, which was September 18th, I had two sales in Mercari and that was it. So the first thing I sold was this American Eagle brown bomber jacket. It sold for $17, but they paid for shipping. And that's something that I'm doing now on Mercari is if things are a little heavier, I am definitely tacking on shipping as well. Like the buyer has to pay for shipping because Mercari is changing their fee structure and sellers are going to have to pay a little bit more. And also like I knew this wasn't going to sell for that much to begin with so I wanted to make sure that I made money on it so they had to pay nine dollars and 99 cents to get this shipped out to them I did use the UPS option which was annoying because I had to like go to UPS but it's totally fine there's one near my house so I ended up making fifteen dollars and thirty cents on this this was a relist and I did get this at Goodwill I probably pay like six bucks for it so not the best flip and then the next thing to sell on Mercari was this old navy denim jacket in a youth large there was a pretty big flaw on one of the sleeves I don't remember I don't know it was just like I don't know there's something about it you can see it in the pictures but I sold this for $14 I had to pay for shipping and it cost $7.45 to ship out so I only made $5.15 on this this was given to me for free though from someone at church who likes to give me stuff to like pass down to my kids I knew my daughter wouldn't wear this she's not really into layers like she just gets really hot really easily so I just went ahead and listed it and so the $5.15 while not much is all profit so I'll take it on September 19th, which was Saturday, I sold this pair of BOC brown leather laser cut flip flops in a size nine. They sold for $10 after relisting them. And so I made $7 and five cents. These flip-flops have been through the mill like I had them listed and then I finally sent them into thread up thread up didn't take them so I got them back and then I relisted them so they've gone through a lot and they finally sold and I made seven dollars and five cents off of them these were something that were part of like a theater garage sale so that seven dollars and five cents is going to go to my theater program anything with like that brick background those are pictures that I literally took at the middle school of my district because that's where we were hosting the garage sale. So if you see anything with a brick background, you know that it's super old and you know that that money is going to my theater program. And then the next thing to sell was this pair of Nike Mercurial Vortex 2 Lilac Soccer Cleats in a size eight and a half. These sold for $15. That was the offer sent to me. So I made $12 on them. I paid less than $2 for them at the consignment store. So while it wasn't a lot, I was happy to you know get the $12. A lot of soccer cleats have been selling right now. I guess it's soccer season. I don't even know. I don't really know sports. Although, yeah, that mm, right? Like in high school, it's like girl soccer's right now. But a lot of soccer cleats have been selling, so that's cool. If you have soccer cleats lying around at home, go ahead and list them. You probably won't make that much off of them, but you know, you may as well list them and make some money off of them. And then on eBay, I sold this vintage Lawrence Kazar sequin party jacket in a size large. This was a relist and it sold for $27.90. That was the offer that I sent to buyers. They paid $10 for shipping, but I was actually able to get it in a padded flat rate envelope, so I only had to pay seven dollars and 
$2.52. So I made $25.45 off of that. I do remember getting that at a Goodwill. These like vintage super sequin beaded jacket type things, they can do okay. They can sell um, usually closer to like the holidays because people are wearing them to holiday parties and stuff. I they're just not like fast sellers, you know what I mean? So definitely don't pick them up thinking that they're gonna be a really quick flip. They're definitely not. But like you can make a decent amount on them. Like I said, I made $25.45 and I probably had like five or six dollars into that. The next thing to sell was this Land's End Classic Squall Fleece Line Jacket in a size large tall. This sold for $21.50. I was running like a 40% off sale in my eBay store. And honestly, like if somebody was watching an item, even though the item was already like on a 40% off discount, I usually would go in and offer an even like slightly lower price to the potential buyers just because I wanted to move stuff out, especially if they were older pieces, you know, things that had been realistic. So this wasn't that old of a piece, but I was just still wanting to get it out of the house. So I sent them an offer of $21.50. It was probably listed around like $40. Um, they paid for shipping, although again, I didn't have them pay enough for shipping. I ended up having to pay $13.09 to ship this out. So I ended up making $14 off of it because it was also promoted at 1%. That one, not like the best sale, but I have less than a dollar into it because it came from the consignment store. Last but not least, on September 20th, which was a Sunday, I had a good number of sales. And the reason for that is because I was doing closet clear out and sending out offers to watchers on eBay and all that kind of stuff. So it ended up being a pretty decent sales day. I got a lot of things out the door, a lot of lower priced items, but things that I had been sitting on for quite some time and I was just happy to see go this first item is no exception to that. So this was in my four for $25 sale and it was this Mossimo Supply Co, which is Target. This just like gray crew neck t-shirt in a size extra small. It sold for $5 and I made $2.05 off of that. To be honest with you, that shirt probably cost $5 to begin with at Target. So this person paid $5 for the shirt plus $7 and however many cents for shipping which is kind of crazy. I do think this was an old shirt of mine that I just wasn't wearing anymore. And so I made $2.05 off of it. I mean, it's not a lot of money. I had it in my closet with the intention and hope that someone would bundle it with something else. They decided not to, which is totally fine. But yeah, I am starting to move away from listing things like this that you know will only give me like two dollars and five cents because it's not really worth my time but this is an older item that i had in my closet and while i'm probably not going to be listing stuff like this from here on out i do think that when you make sales they engender more sales so i wasn't mad about it and then the next thing to sell was a result of closet clear out and by the way either later this week or sometime next week i am going to have a video out about closet clear out so if you want to learn about my closet clear out method and just my step-by-step -step tutorial on how I make sales during Poshmark's closet clear out promotion, then definitely make sure that you've hit that notification bell so that you are alerted as soon as that video comes out, because I do think that it'll be a really helpful one. So the first thing to sell using my closet clear out method was this pair of American Eagle low rise skinny jeans in a size six. I had them listed for 28. I sent out offers to watchers for $22. And so I made $17 and 60 cents on those. I could could not find them for the life of me when it came time to ship them out and it's because I had them in the wrong inventory bag sometimes I'm just like moving too fast as I'm doing inventory and I don't think I'm like clicking on the whatever so I did end up finding them I had to dig inside of every single bin and in my third to last bin I finally found them so good riddance the next thing to sell was this LuLaRoe green printed maxi skirt. And it was like, you know, I have like the fold over at the waist. Um, it's It was in a size medium. It sold for $15 using my closet clear out method. I think I actually like sent them a message saying I could drop the price to $18. And she was like, if you could drop the price to 15, I'll take it. And I was like, sold because there was no attention on the skirt whatsoever. And I made $12 on that sale. I did get it from the consignment store. So I had less than a dollar into that. The next thing to sell also came from the consignment store and it was this pair of Talbot's khaki high rise embroidered Bermuda shorts in a size 10. They just had little like 
um, like asterisks almost like embroidered all over the shorts in like a slightly lighter color than the khaki color of the shorts. So they were very like subtle. But I sent out my closet clear out spiel said I could drop the price to $16. She agreed. And so I made $12.80 and Poshmark paid for discounted shipping. And then the next thing to sell was not actually because of closet clear out. They just sent me an offer. Um, this also happened to be something that I relisted. And it was this Brooks Brothers striped slim fit button up shirt in a size 16 and a half. So this was like a dress shirt. Someone sent me an offer on it for $19 and I made $15 and 20 cents. I had just very recently relisted this. I was so happy to see it go because I have a lot of these like men's, you know, button up dress shirts or even button up casual shirts that I'm so desperate to see go. I just have so many and I definitely am going to stop picking these up because they just take a really long time to sell and they usually don't sell for that much. The last thing to sell on Poshmark was also a result of my closet clear out method. And it was this Robert Graham striped contrast cuff shirt in a size 3XL. There were a couple flaws, like some of the embroidery on one of the sleeves or like the stitching was coming undone. So obviously I took pictures and I noted it in the description, but I sent them a message saying that I could drop the price to $38. Poshmark would pay for $2.12 of the shipping. And he was like, absolutely send me the offer. So I made $30.40. The best thing about this shirt is that I got it at the bin, so I had less than a dollar into it. I was so excited when I found it because I think that that was my very first time finding Robert Graham. Um, I don't think Robert Graham does as well as it used to. Like it used to be, you could get like upwards of 50, you know, 60, 70 dollars for Robert Graham shirts. And I thought for sure because this was. 3XL that I would be able to sell it quick and for a lot of money. But the truth is I've had this for over a year and I did finally let it go for $38. So, you know, when you're watching what sold videos, a couple things you want to do is you want to make sure you're watching more recent ones because while, you know, a lot of people are making what sold videos and I think they're all really great for research purposes. If you're watching older ones, even if they're just like a year old, sometimes you're going to hear about brands that did really well back then, but just are not performing as well in the current current day that you're in. So not that like m the majority of my sales this week are things that you should be on the lookout for because these are all super bread and butter or like we're scraping the bottle, the barrel here. These are like my oldest listings and we're finally getting them out the door. But yeah, Robert Graham was something that I just kept hearing about and I still think it was a great sale. I just was much more excited for it than I needed to be. Like I was 50, 60, $70 worth excited, not $30. You know what I mean? So just a little heads up as you are doing your research and watching what sold videos. And then on eBay, I sold, this was my lowest sale. Are you ready? I sold this Morona, which is another Target brand, polka dot scoop neck t-shirt in a size small that I got for free from someone. And I had it out to auction for $1.99. I usually don't even turn on best offer when I have, you know, things out to auction, but somehow I missed that on this and someone sent me an offer of $1. I mean, I didn't even care. I was like, fine, take it for $1. I just want to get it out. So I accepted the offer. They paid for shipping. They actually ended up paying a little bit more for shipping than they needed to. So I ended up making $1.30 off of this. I was fully expecting to make less than a dollar on this after fees and all that, but I ended up making $1.30. That is enough for a McDonald's Coke, so I'll take it. And that was something that I had, you know, pretty recently relisted. The next thing to sell was this pair of Gap Kids Navy Glitter Bow Flats. They were in a size three and they sold for $6.90. That was the offer that I sent out to watchers because again, I was running a 40% off sale. Someone was watching them. I sent them a tiny bit lower of a discount. They accepted and so I made $5.40 off of those. Again, they were for free. Someone gave them to me from church, intended for my daughter but they were like pretty wide and I didn't think my daughter's feet would fit them and then the last thing to sell on eBay was this pair of miss me cross design jeweled skinny jeans in a size 26 by 31 I got an offer on these for $25 and after they paid for shipping I made $20.97 I'm trying to remember where I got those. I kind of think they were from the consignment store, but I'm not 100% sure. I do know I've had them for at least a few months, so I was happy to see them go. And Miss Me Jeans is another one of those brands that used to do so well, like you could get like $60, $70 for them. But now, honestly, $25, $35 if you're lucky. Like the market for them just isn't really there. So the ones that I have are kind of like the leftovers. And I still pick them up if I can get them for cheap enough, but um, definitely not a brand to get like super excited about. And then the very 
very last sale was over on Kittizen and it was this pair of Cat and Jack, which is again, Target. So a lot of Target sales this week, but Cat and Jack embroidered floral skinny jeans in a size 6X. And so these sold for my full asking price on Kittizen for $17.95. I did have free shipping on there and shipping on this was $4.75. So I made $11.12 off of those. I got those at the consignment store for less than a dollar. So, you know, pretty decent profit there. All right. Those were my sales for the week. Let's talk really quickly about how that breaks down as well as how I'm doing with that consignment store and all the stuff that I picked up from there, as well as how many of these items were relists. So on Poshmark, I sold 14 items and I made $177.85 of profit. So that is after shipping discounts, after platform fees, all that good stuff. Um, obviously like my ASP on that is not very high, but you saw and heard like I was moving a lot of older pieces. On eBay, I sold 10 items, 11 if you count the one that got returned, but I'm not counting it. And I made $97.61 off of those 10 items. Again, a super low ASP, and that's because I was selling things for like a dollar, two dollars, you know? I don't know, it still feels good to get rid of stuff, so I don't even care. And then on Mercari, I sold three things for $30.43. On Kittizen, I sold two things for $17.79. On ThreadUp, I sold three things for $82.34. So that brought me to a total of 32 items sold and a total of $406.02 going in my bank account. So even though you heard me talking about these like $1, $3, $5 sales, everything adds up. You know, I had one bigger sale in there, like $60 from that one free people sweater. But even all those little sales, they really do add up. And somehow I still made a profit. Like I still put $406 in my bank account. That's pretty big. And again, if you've been watching my channel, you know this, but I have not been listing any new items for the last, I want to say like month or two, I've only been relisting. And that's why so many of these items that are selling are selling for so cheap. It's because because it's the oldest listings in my Poshmark closet and I'm just trying to get rid of them. But now that I've approached the items that I've listed like in May, um, cause I've gotten through all the super old stuff. I think that the relisted items will be for higher prices and they'll just be better overall. So hopefully one, I'll finish relisting here very soon. I have very recently figured out a much faster way to do it. I'm so excited to share with you what I've been doing because Oh my gosh, it has been such a game changer. Like I'm able to relist 40 items in the same time that I was able to relist 10. So uh, what I'm doing now is much, much, much faster. And like I said, I'll have a video coming out about that soon. Even without listing new stuff, I still made $406. I'm super happy with that. And then just to give you an update on how I'm doing at the consignment store, I have sold 214 items that I listed from there and I have made $3,439.70. So I've basically made $2,000 so far off of the items that I've sold from there. And I was sourcing from them like, I wanna say it was like May and June. That's when I was going there. So um, I'm really pleased with that. And of the 32 items that I sold, Nine of them were a result of me relisting things. So again, I think that that's pretty cool. I think it's great that even if you don't have new inventory to list, you can still make money. You can still have a lot of great activity in all of the platforms that you sell on just by relisting. So just something to think about if you are kind of hurting for new inventory. But that's it for my video, guys. By the way, did you notice I cut my hair? It used to be down to like my butt, basically, and I chopped off so much of it. I'm so happy. And I'm wearing my Hamilton shirt from when I went. If you didn't watch my like get to know me video, I'll link that right here. But I talk about my love for Hamilton and Harry Potter and all that stuff in that video. But that's it for this What Sold. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.